Yeah, that chemistry is important, Jackie, with all players. I mean, we saw it when we played in the uh, uh, in our Super Bowl game and what happened the following year. Oh my goodness! The the Vince, we had the 16, amount of changes. We had sixteen new guys on our roster after we went to the Super Bowl. Now we our record was nine and seven getting to the Super Bowl. In the following year, we were eleven, 11 and five. We were eleven and five. We had a better record, but we didn't have the team chemistry. That's we right. didn't have the guys who understood. I have to step up in this moment to make this play in order for us to be successful. Well, that successful. leads me to another question, Jackie. And now when we look at the Rams' schedule this year, each year is a different year, a new outlook. But the Rams seem to be retooling in 2023. They've let all their starters pretty much go. Seven or eight starters from last year's team are off the, Just off on the defense. roster. Just on defense. Yes, and then on offense, you know, it's a big question mark. I mean, how, how would you feel going into this season, you know, and how do you get ready to play for 2023 when you think they're looking forward to 2024? Right. I mean, how would you feel? Well, there were some negative comments made uh, by some of the fans, and they said, well, now, you've got uh, Matthew Stafford, you've got Cooper Cup, and you've got Aaron Donald, and some uncomfortable. Everybody else. And everybody else is basically what they said. Yeah. and. And, you know, that, there's a lot to be said about that. I mean, I think special players need special players around them, special playmakers mm -hmm. around them, so that they can complement uh, one another. I, I was very disappointed and saddened to see Greg Gaines leave because he, I thought he and, and when he and Aaron Donald played in tandem, I thought they complemented each other beautifully. So he's no longer there, just one of those eight former uh, defensive starters that are no longer there at the Rams. But this is what I know, Vince. This is what I grew to understand in the 20 years that I played pro football. You know, playing pro football, the average career only going to last you about three years. You have to seize the opportunity. You have to make the most of the opportunity. There are going to be a lot of guys on the Ram roster who in their first year contracts, just getting a taste of what the NFL is all about, looking to the future, and they are going to have to deliver. They are going to have to stand and deliver for themselves. That's what it's all about, Vince. You can't. You can't be looking around and saying who's next to me, who's not here anymore. I, you are here as a professional football player. Your job is to do your job at a top, top level to enhance your team's opportunity to win. And I think that's the thing that's going to drive the individuals who watch all this change at the Rams all going on all around them. They're going to put their nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. and say, and say to themselves, I don't want to be next. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't want to be the next guy to send away from here because I'm not contributing. So I think that professional motivation is something that the Rams brass is banking on. They're banking on everybody wanting an opportunity and wanting the best out of that opportunity. So they're going to try to get the best guys in here so they can get that opportunity. Well, you, you see that happening, Jackie, throughout the league. I mean, teams are uh, retooling uh, their offense, their defense, and player personnel. Uh, guys are moving around. But the other thing that we also see what's happened in the NFL is that not only would a player become a free agent, but a player sometimes would decide that, hey, I need to call it quits. When do you stop? You played 20 years in the league. I mean, it's, it's unfathomable to think how long 20 years in the NFL is equivalent <laughs> to in a regular job, but it's Somebody. like 100 years. But, but uh, I'm telling you, Jackie, there, you know, when I was a kid growing up, one of the great defensive backs I saw play for the Green Bay Packers was a guy by the name of Herb Adderley. I remember And her. Herb was quoted by Vince Lombardi as one of the best defensive backs he's ever coached. He and said the he, best. The best. The best talent yeah. at so, that position that he's ever coached. And, you know, through the family tree, you know, his nephew, okay, is Nasir Adderley. And he plays for the Chargers. Jackie started 44 out of 50 games in his first four years. Jackie's one of the standouts in the secondary. But he says... He's putting himself first for once, and his health is above everything else. And he's calling it quits at age 25. What are your thoughts about that? Well, my, my thoughts are that um, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is, is puzzling because I didn't see him out of the lineup. Yeah. And that first thing that comes to my mind is that there must be some grave injury that he has sustained that is progressively getting worse. Mm -hmm. Something very serious that the doctors is helping him to monitor that's getting worse and worse and worse the longer he plays. That's mm -hmm. the way. If you play the game of pro football and you're in the National Football League, 
yeah, you want to get the compensation and everything, but you love it. You're playing it because you love it. And if this guy is saying that for one time in his life, he's going to put himself and his health first, and we don't know anything about any injuries, that tells me that there's something going on. There's something maybe could be very grave, very serious going on. And he's been rolling in the dice perhaps for a number of years with this fence. And so with him having the, the, the presence of mind to realize this, then it, he, I think he's to be commended. I think he's to be commended for taking himself out of, because you know as well as I do, Vince, you didn't have to deal with it like I did. When you practice and play professional football, if you are a lineman, a linebacker, a safety, a small guy coming in the box to engage uh, these big backs coming in there and trying to get them on the ground, tight ends over the middle, that is a very physical job. It is very, very demanding on your body. And if you know that you have something lurking in the back, in the backgrounds that could take you out and ruin your quality of life uh, at, at, at 25 years of age in the future, I think you have to give some long and considerable yeah. thought to the decision to continue to play this game. You know, Jackie, you can only take so many hits <laughs> during your career. And sometimes, you know, those those Monday mornings are you know, they're slow getting up. And yes. sometimes the older you get, it takes to your Thursday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday yeah, before you're ready so, to go again. So, so Thursday turns into <laughs> Monday after year 10. I can tell you oh, that right now. Oh, my goodness, man, I'll tell you. And it, it, it's, you know, I think because of, you know, like you said, any pre-existing conditions, any health problems that someone might have or incur, incur that maybe that is a, that's an incentive to say, hey, maybe this is a, this is time for me to, time for to me step to aside. Mm -hmm. But, you know, all the years that we've played, we've watched football, and, you know, we've seen some surprising early retirements from players, uh, not only that played before us, but during the time we played. Um, any of those players... Um, uh, were you shocked at any of those players that, that actually retired too early? Retired too early or what I thought was early? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, you're yeah, 20 what, years. So yeah, <laughs> what, what, what I thought was yeah. early, Vince, and you know, the guy that, that, that comes to mind right away is, is, is Barry Sanders. You know Barry Sanders went to Oklahoma State. Yes. Tom Osborne, who was the great coach at Nebraska and Bob Devaney, they said that entire coaching staff, the best running back they'd ever they'd played ever seen, against. They'd ever seen. Well, well, listen, I played in Pro Bowl with Barry, and we He's ran we ran the ball right behind me, right? I knew yeah. it was coming right at me, and I got yeah. stuffed at the line of scrimmage. I mean, just jaw jacked. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I feel this thud on my back. Boom. I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this is going to be embarrassing when I look at this when I get home. Yeah. And I knew it was Barry that hit me in the back. And then I rolled over and I looked up, man, he was 25 yards downfield, still making people miss him. He was a dynamic guy. He could change direction on a dime. I never, Shifty, huh? never Shifty saw jacket. anybody as quick as him. Yeah. Never saw a human being change direction yeah. like this guy could. It was something about the way he was built. I don't know what it was. This guy was dynamic. And then for him to retire, yeah. and I think it was 31, Vince. Yes. And he yes. had to, this was the old. interesting thing, Vince. He retired at 31, and he had to give a huge chunk, prorated portion of his signing bonus back, back to the Detroit Lions. And you know what? Mm -hmm. he, wasn't, he wasn't hurt. He didn't have something no. that took him out of the game. He left the game on his terms. And that, that was, uh, for me, early retirement for him was, was amazing because I was looking forward to seeing just how long can this talented guy play. Isn't it great, though, to watch each and every year, even from the guys from Jim Brown to Gail Sayers to Walter Payton, now a guy like Barry Sanders, and now you look at guys today, Jack, they have unique running styles. They have unique abilities to break to the open field and elude tacklers. I mean, Barry Sanders, would, like you said, his – he could stop on a dime and spin and turn and, oh, and juke somebody out. Amazing. You, you could be sitting there just, what the world just happened? Just, just happened. running right by and you. You want to look at it on film two or three times but, to make sure you saw it. But, Jackie, you know this game, you have to play with a desire to play. And you want to be hungry each and every year. And when you lose that hunger, right. you need to step aside. Barry Sanders knew it was time. Right. Earl Campbell was another one that left early. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it happens more to running backs, Jackie, because – they're, they're not in for the long term. They, they, the, the hits that I've seen running backs take, oh. from, from my perspective back in the back, it, it, it was, it's, it's unbelievable because it they're really running is. full stride, full steam, and someone else is running full steam, and the, the contact is And usually the guys is, that, that, that are running into them are bigger than they are. A lot more, more than more and, than and likely, And back yes. in those days, Vince, guys were putting their hat. The hats were getting there before the bodies were, so they were nailing these backs. And, I mean, yeah. you, you look at Todd Gurley. I mean, Todd Gurley was a big physical back, 
very effective back for the Rams yeah. for a long time. And the year that they went to that first Super Bowl when they lost to the Patriots, I mean, he just yeah. disappeared down the stretch. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I happen to believe that there was something physically wrong with him, and Sean McVay was using him as a decoy in his offense at that particular time. Because if he had been healthy, there's no way he would have not given him football 17, 18 times, inserting him in there behind that offensive line. So I happen to believe that Todd Gurley, like many other backs that I played with, got beat up. Yeah, they, they, they did. take a lot yeah. of shots, Vince, and, and you just can't avoid it. The longevity maybe is eight to ten years. Some of the guys, Jim Brown, Earl Campbell, Terrell Davis, okay, uh, all, Barry all Sanders, under Gale 10 Sears, years. All, all those under guys 10 years. played under yeah. ten years. But, you know, the guy that, that surprised me a little bit, Jackie Steppen, away from the game, was, was a great talent himself from Stanford, was uh, Andrew Luck. You know, he retired the from the Colts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had mm -hmm. some, he had a lacerated kidney. He had some shoulder problems, and he also had an abdominal tear. But, you know, at age 29, he stepped aside. And that was one of the big it was surprises it was to me. Yeah, so it was, this guy it was. you felt like was just, yeah. just a year away from taking his team to the Super Bowl and winning it. And his, his mentality was one of the supreme mentalities. Uh, at least as he executed himself in front of the media, mm -hmm. that I saw at that quarterback position over the term of my career. And when, when I heard that he was retiring, I'm thinking, okay, this has got to be about money. Yeah. This guy wants a raise of some sort. And when it never yeah. came up again and he stayed away from the game, on the heels of telling us about his injuries and his health and how that was a priority, then I was, uh, I was really shocked. And, and quite frankly, I was a little bit disappointed because he was really, really good. Jackie, we've got to move on to a new subject. One of the topics we really like, and we got to use our illustrator board for this, and it, it has to do with the new proposed rule changes in the NFL for 2023. I think there's like something like 15 different rule changes that they're thinking about using. One of the impactful rule changes that most viewers will get a kick out of this one is at the end of a game when a team's trailing, right, Jackie, they, they usually go for an onside kick, but there's an alternative uh, a play that they can use now. They would start on their own 20-yard line and have to go one play 20 yards. If they convert 20 yards or more, then they continue their drive and they hold on to the ball. So not only do they score the touchdown, they can get the ball back either by onside kick or start uh, their own try. Now, obviously, it's late in the game. It's a desperation move. Right. You know, it might, it might add a little bit more color and excitement to the game. Yeah. But another rule, Jackie, that you are involved with and you've seen personally what happens is what we call a split flow block. And they're thinking about outlawing that play because of some of the injuries and right. the problems that it can occur. Absolutely. Let's go on the board and illustrate what you saw and why, why it's come to be and why, why it is so pressing at this point, the split flow block. Okay. Can you diagram that? Yes, I will. But I will say, you know, years ago, Vince, uh, the illegal chop block mm -hmm. uh, was, was performed um, in a nationally televised game. And the fans were sitting there and they're saying, why was there a penalty call? Uh, all he did was peel back and, and hit the guy. But when they slowed down the film and they looked at it, what we saw was one of the most grotesque injuries that could probably ever occur in a football game. This young man had an offensive lineman to, to, to vacate him, to come around and to chop him below the waist and his ankle totally, totally came out of place. Mm -hmm. And you could clearly see it. And if you were sitting at home and you watched that, you would think, how could they let that happen? Well, they outlawed that rule and they made it a vicious, they, they termed it a vicious violation of the rule if you did that. And you can get fined upwards of fifteen to $20,000 if you did. And they mm -hmm. took it a step further with the split flow uh, chop block. And that's the one we'll take a look at right okay, now. Okay, let's take a look at it. And I think the split, what the split, the split yeah. flow chop block is basically the same thing. It, it's just a <clears throat> derivative. It came from the illegal chop block that we first saw. So Vince, pull that up, please. Okay, there's your pin right there. Okay. Let's uh, swipe okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did we swipe it the right way, Jackie? <laughs> uh, I think we Let's swiped see. it the wrong way. Okay, Vince. hold on. Let's see. We're gonna swipe it mm -hmm. this way. Okay, right, there, there we go. go. So that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good place to start. All right. You and see, you this, this right down. here, this right here was the original. It happened on a Monday night, nationally televised game. This offensive tackle for the Denver Broncos, he chipped the inside shoulder of this defensive end. He chipped that defensive end on an inside shoulder, and the defensive end came screaming off the backside just like he normally would do. But this tackle, who made him feel like he was forgetting him, 
He peeled back on him just like that, and boom. And he got him right below the knee, told one of the most devastating injuries that I've ever seen. And so after that occurred, that illegal chop by blue was, rule was instituted. No longer is that eligible in the National Football League. So the National Football League Players Association has a one responsibility, and that is to look out for the interests of its constituents, all the current players. And so what they found is that from this, there's another block, the split flow chop block that has to be uh, disallowed and penalized and discouraged uh, totally before they end up with another uh, grotesque injury. And then okay, you can slide that over. No, you slide it the same way. All right, okay. very good. It's all already right. drawn up. Now, the split flow chop block emanates or starts from the original plan, which is, thank you, Vinny. <laughs> How do you erase I'll get it, Vinny. All right, there it. you go. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Just, just there erase that. Okay. Go. It starts from the original plan that the yeah. action on this particular play is going to the, to the call side. All the action is coming here. And you see what this does is it creates various lanes for this back to insert the ball. He can insert the ball inside of the tackle, inside of the guard, right there between them two, the, the center on the backside tackle and the guard, he can insert. And what they're doing, they're running combination blocks and they bring this H back all the way across the formation, past the center, and he chops this defensive end. That is so a that's dangerous, a split flow block. That's a split flow. That's one He's of the ways crossing it, the center. That's one of the ways it manifests itself. You have to cross the center with that chop blocker right there. And he comes over. This guy's not expecting it. He's reading the offensive tackle. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's a 245-pound guy on his inside knee. And it is very dangerous. So, now, Jackie, where do you, have, do you have the quarterback here? Is in the guy? It, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't let's matter. Just, it's okay. Let's just go to the next one, Vince. Put okay, the next, the one, next one. Okay, let's close this off. Yeah, close that off. Put the next one up. There and here's go. another way that this block... Uh, has 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 worked. Same rules. Same rules apply. We're running the inside zone here. We're you want the, the you want it in red? Uh, it, it's okay. I can put it in red. Thank you, Vinny. Okay, how's You're that? You're running the inside zone here. You're running the inside zone there. Boom, stretching there, and that gives this back an opportunity to insert this ball anywhere in here. Okay, on the backside, they run the combination climbing, and they bring this guy here all the way to the center, and then back. And that's where that illegal chop block occurs. And once again, that defensive end is not anticipating that. What he is reading is this guy running a scoop or an under block, and he's going to close as hard as he can, and usually with his outside hand free, which means that his leg, his inside leg, is sitting right there and vulnerable for this guy to chop it. It's a rule that had to be instituted. They couldn't let this go on because it jeopardizes the health of some of the best pure pass rushes in the National Football League. In fact, I happen to believe that this particular run is set up by many offensive coordinators to ding the great pass rushes on the backside, the, the great pass rushes that are coming off the edge. Yeah. So that's one rule, though it's a proposal right now. I really think it's going to stick, Vince, and we won't be seeing any more of these And one of the blocks. players this year that was affected by this play was T.J. Watt for Pittsburgh, and he was playing an outside position. In Absolutely. Position. Hawkinson from Detroit was uh, running this play, and you know, he was trying to cover the C-gap, Jackie, right. and he was, wasn't expecting a guy to come low and hit him, and he, he was injured, for, put him out for a couple games. And so this I think guy that's right one here of was one of, is one of the best pass rushers in all of pro football. So there's no doubt in my mind that to a certain degree, you want to make this guy have to play so many different types of blocks to neutralize him as a pure pass rusher. And this is one of those blocks. It just so happens that it's a dangerous block. And I think it took, uh, it took Bosa out for two weeks or so. Didn't it, Vince? Yes. All right, yes, very it good. did. Very okay, good. so now let me show you something here, Jackie. I'll diagram something up. Yes. Where I think this play, this, this kind of motion play, and this threat of a block will stay in, in the offensive game plan for most teams. Now, you look at this play here, and you see we're in a shotgun formation. Anytime we have a play action pass, we usually have a terminology where you have three digits. So 100, 200, 300, or 400. This would be a 300 uh, series where you have the tw two back here, is going to go through the five holes. So we'll say 325. So it's like a roll after this play action. But what is effective here, you see this short motion with the H back. This is a trip set to this right side. But we're trying to 
affect this end. And he thinks now it looks like run, so he thinks he's going to get chop blocked, but he doesn't get chop blocked. And he slows down. And he slows and he runs under. We call it under, H under, 325 mm -hmm. H under, uh, H, um, this would be U, U cross. So when we come over here, typically this guy would be wide open and usually this corner would run back and then you got a wide open pass to the flat. So I think this play will stay in effect, Jackie, just because this kind of movement is very effective. It's kind of a, it's a misdirection it, it, movement it really for an is, offense. But as soon as, as soon as they figure out that he is not going to chop him, the first right. thing they're going to do right. is have Bosa grab this guy so he can't, <laughs> <laughs> well, so he can't get up for a pass. There we go. That, that's really good. This, but, I like that. I like the, okay. the, the, so anyway, the we, work that we do on the we board We got there. that. And uh, so now I think we go back here and I don't know, we get back to the, the, oh, maybe we just have to just scroll it, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, let's don't spend too much well, time. Here we go. We, we uh -oh. Is it going back this way? Or yes, not? it has. We're going to try to get it back to the... <laughs> there we go. I mean, we did it. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. Did it. So, well, that's I, always I think, fun. I think that, you know, every year this time, and, and you know, this, this rule was proposed, the change of this rule was proposed by coaches who see it adversely, adversely affecting their defensive personnel, both schematically and the individual's mm -hmm. health. So there are lots Almost of proposals definitely. right now. We don't know which ones are going to be um, uh, rule uh, illegal. Uh, we will find that out when after the meetings and everything. But I think that one is the one that we can anticipate being changed because it jeopardizes the health of the players. The other one that I think we can anticipate somewhat is the one that you mentioned, Vince, uh, where at the desperation at the end of the game where you're trying to win the game, yeah. you get the yeah. ball back, you get to take that 20-yard shot and everything. If you convert, you get the you know, all of I think those two rules are two that we can almost bank on uh, as changes in the National Football League. By the way, the, that rule, that second one, is already implemented in the XFL. So if you That's watch right. the XFL football and you'll, you'll, see see, it. you'll see this at and the end of that. the game uh, where a team is trailing and you'll see them go for it on fourth down. And if they convert that 20 yards, get that 20 yards and score, now you'll see the, the total change in the game and its outcome. 